self-compacting concrete. It was developed in Japan in the 1980s as high-strength concrete. It basically has a much higher cement content um, by the addition of water-reducing admixture. This is a slump test, and that's the exact same test done with self-compacting on the right there. In normal concrete, the cement particles are electrostatically charged. They tend to clump together, which means that they both trap water in the mix and they increase friction. They don't flow as well against each other. By adding a water-reducing admixture, that's a chemical with sort of long, negatively charged molecules, which sort of bond themselves onto the cement particles, neutralize that charge, and basically allow you to do exactly the same job, the same amount of flowability to your concrete without adding excess water. And obviously, if you're adding excess water, then you've got more of it evaporating during the drying out. Ultimately, you have less cement in your mix, which is leading to a lower strength and a worse visual concrete. Nowadays, we use super plasticizers, which are essentially a, a type of chemical which does that job even better. They, um, they cause an active repelling charge between cement particles and give you even more bang for your buck, as it were. This is the actual mix we used at Latimer Road. Things of note are limiting the maximum aggregate size. Nothing's bigger than 10 mil to give it the best possible chance of flowing in between bits of formwork and reinforcement cage. A super plasticizer, a very low water cement ratio of 0.4, and Rio Matrix. It's worth remembering with self compacting concrete that. When you've made it that flowy, you're also risking destabilizing it. If you make something which is too fluid, it allows the aggregate to sort of separate itself out like cereal does by size or shape or density, which will give you all sorts of problems. So you add in this viscosity modifying agent, which adds a bit of stiffness back into the cement paste. The upshot of all of this is that you don't need to vibrate on site, which makes it quicker uh, and easier to place. It's very good at dealing with awkward shapes and congested rebar. The material cost is slightly higher. It ultimately was offset almost entirely by the reduction of labor and time spent on site. It is important to control the mix quality. Never ever want to see a contractor just chucking loads of extra water into a mix when it arrives on site to make it more flowable particularly not in self-compacting. That can sort of really destabilize the whole thing. It's, it's a special product. Um, but as long as the guys on site understand what they're working with, then absolutely fine, works really well. And it's, it's important to remember that you know, there's no magic solutions to everything out there. You've got to educate the site operatives, and you've got to remember sort of all of the stuff that goes into visual concrete, not just the mix. This is one particularly good example um, of what you can achieve with self-compacting. This was another Price and Myers project back in Lincoln several years ago, where a leaf accidentally fell into the formwork. You can see the level of detail that's been picked up. It's fantastic. And following that, they accidentally dropped quite a few more leaves <laughs> in a, a particularly sort of poignant places around the building. 